clearly, uh, even on the third lap out in the car, even though I didn't know the circuit, the amount of grip that you were getting from these devices was phenomenal. I'm not sure what happened. Um, uh, coming into my third lap in qualifying, I approached the fast downhill section just before the pits there on that street circuit in France and the back of the car snapped away from me. And then it just went to spun, it just went and started to go backwards, but it didn't spin completely, and it went halfway, and then started to go backwards, and then it went the whole turn again, and next thing I saw was the wall here. You hit the wall. Whether it was a mistake, or whether some believe, and I do, that this tall rear wing up on stalks suddenly fell over backwards, and as it went over backwards, of course, the downforce incidents from this position turned to lift in this position as it went over backwards and may have picked the back wheels of the car off the ground. But anyway, the result was that I hit the entrance of a chateau, um, which was wrought iron gates. Fortunately, I didn't hit the wrought iron gates, otherwise I would have been like cheese through a grater. I hit the retaining walls either side, probably at about 120 miles an hour. And all I could see was this dust settling and the picture. I thought it was heaven, actually, because it was a picture of this beautiful chateau, this drive with a chateau at the end of it and cows grazing in the fields. It wasn't until Colin Chapman, who ran across the track because it was right opposite the pits, uh, came and shook me on the shoulder, saying, what happened, what happened, what happened? But I realized I was still around. Oh, dearie me. Brandy, Cool, you were white, you're, you're better now. You were pretty white 10 minutes ago. Well, I think you ought to sit down, and sit down in the, in the chair. Oh, bad, really? I saw that wall coming up. Chapman was competitive to his fingertips. On this occasion, he was quick to try to turn Oliver's crash to his advantage, with some gamesmanship at the expense of his rival, Bruce McLaren. Did you, you didn't hit anything, did you? You, didn't, you haven't actually hit anything all the time when no. it's spun. No, I didn't hit anything. All I've done was spun on the hairpin. That slow lap you see, the whole, of the whole of the rear suspension is in fact hung on that gearbox. Oh, yeah. And if that breaks, well, that's it. But then they're all on the same basis. Hey, Bruce, look, I think I better tell you, the gearbox bell housing broke, and you know the whole of our rear suspension's hung on the gearbox, same as yours. And it's just broken in half in the middle. You know, the bell housing's got a hell of a load in it, if you think about it. That's all that's happened. It's just broken in half. I'm bringing Graham in. I'm not going to run him like that. You better have a look and see if there's any cracks in your bell housing. Do you think we all don't This incident demonstrated how sometimes Chapman's innovations were at the ragged edge of technology, but his determination and inventive genius saw him through most problems. These things tended to make you a bit, you know, think a bit, but uh, still you drove the cars as hard as you could, and I always had implicit faith in Colin, 